Hello, we have talked about uh, the legal uh, translation and uh, some of the legal uh, English and the features of the legal English and some of the terminology or, uh, and its uh, features like archaic, like French and uh, it, uh, Latin uh, being used and some of the archaic uh, language, medieval uh, English, as well as the other things relating to the long sentences that are self-contained units and supporting, subordinating uh, clauses and adverbials used and lack of punctuations. And we talked about that there is very little uh, punctuated sentences. And also we talked about that it's formulaic and uh, used some of the phrases uh, in the previous video. Uh, now what I'm talking, what I'll be talking about more because I didn't talk about uh, the text types quite uh, thoroughly. I'd like to explain that more uh, this time around. Of course, when I'm talking about three types of the text types that are uh, spoken by uh, Basil Hatem, uh, which was beautifully explained in his book, is that, uh, of course, the first type is the instructional, which means that you are regulating through instructions, through the law. That's what you are doing. You are dealing with highly conventional kind of use of language and literal translation is uh, in legal documents is very obviously used. Um, so uh, the, the instructional um, context is fairly strict. Uh, the text structure is quite formulaic. Um, the diction is highly unemotive, i.e. there are not many adjectives in that. And the tenor, the overall tenor of that, it's extremely detached. It's an extremely detached kind of uh, text. Uh, therefore, as I said earlier about the uh, marriage contract or an agreement between two parties, there won't be any emotional, uh, it's, it is quite objective, it's quite neutral, using, um, as I said earlier, with these uh, passive uh, constructions uh, to be raised and so on. And of course, Basil Hatem says, Ietimmu as a good option, which is uh, which I really support. The second type of uh, text types, uh, which is not used in legal uh, documents, but in other documents, uh, is the expository one. Exposition is the uh, second type of uh, text type uh, that is used, and that is uh, where you are a little bit relaxed, more relaxed than the um, instructional, um, and there is a, a, the detachment is there still in that, and the, uh, it's it's fairly organized. The actual structure, text structure of the expository uh, text is uh, is fairly organized and far less stringent formulaic, formulaically, if you like, uh, than uh, the legal texts that we talked about earlier, and the texture is fairly tight, but not as tight as the legal. Uh, texts because the legal texts they want to leave no gaps whatsoever to any misinterpretation or very ambiguity at all and that's why uh, but the expository will be less dense than the legal uh, one uh, legal language uh, that's been used and the expository of course there's a degree of evaluativeness that's very very important you don't as I said before about uh, you don't uh, pass judgment about each party as how they look like. Like you can't say, for example, the first party is fat and short and bald, like my head here, or, um, or, or, or you pass any judgment on the other one. You just say um, this party is selling this part, the other party, a property or a car or whatever. The, the product is, and that's it. Whereas in the expository, there's a kind of evaluativeness there, which is uh, very common in exposition, uh, and uh, the diction is uh, emotive as well, fairly emotive. Uh, there is uh, metaphoric expressions are used, but only, uh, but not as much as the argumentative ones, but uh, metaphoric expressions are not used in legal documents, that's another thing which I want to emphasize. Uh, the formality of the legal documents uh, is not there in the expository uh, text types, 
so there's a feel, general feel of semi-formal uh, text, but not uh, that's what you expect in the expository texts. Uh, that are being used and the approach is the same in terms of translation is literal translation as well but it's more detached uh, uh, than uh, in the spectrum uh, within the same within the exposition um, uh, but there is also evaluativeness and free uh, freer kind of forms used uh, for that one. So uh, just to summarize now, we've got the uh, expository, which is a bit more relaxed, less stringent. Uh, the literal uh, translation is used still, but uh, fairly, uh, fairly uh, not as strict as the legal documents, which is in the instructional uh, texts. Um, so the inst instructional text types are more strict, and that's why they are legal and there is no evaluativeness whatsoever in the instructional uh, texts. When we move on to the argumentative texts, however, we find that um, the evaluativeness is more there and more open-ended kind of texts are used in the argumentative. And, and the argumentative is to evaluate in order to, very important, to, to persuade or to convince um, this is the most important uh, context uh, in the context. So the context is uh, is uh, the one in which the need to evaluate in order to evaluate, uh, to, to persuade, sorry. So evaluating in order to persuade, as in the case of women driver 